All right, welcome Mr. Colazar's chemistry class. Chapter two, we're going to start looking at analyzing data. And our key part to start with is we're going to be looking into the metric system and its prefixes. So why do we need to look into using this? Is reason why is that everybody needs a common system for comparison. So the entire world works on metric system. Someday maybe the US will too. But for now, in chemistry class, we will use the metric system. And we need a common system for comparison. So one of the ways, we are, one of the reasons we do this is to easily share, verify, compare each other's data so we can reproduce experiments. If one person does something somewhere, we should be able to reproduce it somewhere else. Uh, add this part to your notes, a standard. Standard is a unit of measurement uh, that everyone can agree on for comparison. So. If you measure a meter here, it should be a meter in Japan, it should be a meter in Russia, even a meter in South Dakota. So as we're going, a standard is a unit of measurement that everybody can agree on for comparison. Many years ago, scientists got together and created what was called the SI system. It took place in France. So they call it the Système International de Units. Anytime we're going to be responsible for knowing it's known as the SI system. And the SI system came up with a standard uh, of all units for comparison. Uh, we'll talk about many of them as the year goes on. We'll talk about how the second is now, how it's measured, what it actually is compared to, so that we have some concept of why they're compared. But for now, we just need to know the base units, time for seconds, length for meters, Mass will be measured in kilograms or grams, grams specifically. And then temperature will keep us Celsius. But second semester, when we talk about gas laws, we're going to be measuring in Kelvin. And we'll worry about that one later on. So all these are part of the metric system. Kelvin is a little bit different. It focuses on just on um, working in gas laws second semester. So why do we want to use the metric system? One of the best parts about the metric system is the prefix uses. And what it does is it's able to describe a range of possible measurements. So one of the ideas would be if we were to be measuring a distance, distance measured in meters, and the meter is abbreviated with the letter M. Now prefixes go before the base unit. So if we're measuring in meters, it's just M. But if we want to add a prefix, then we put that letter before. So then we could have like kilometers or centimeters or millimeters, all of which are still a measure of distance but are going to be either larger or smaller amounts than the original meters. Now an example would be if we're measuring, let's say, the length of your finger. So that's a smaller measurement. Centimeters would be our common unit of measurement there. Now you wouldn't want to measure the same distance used to measure your finger to measure the distance between, say, Fargo and Minneapolis. The kilometer, a little over a half a mile is one kilometer, would be a much better unit for measurement for much larger distances. Width of the pencil lead, smaller than even your finger, millimeters would be a good choice there. Now notice millimeters, M, M, two lowercase m's, and your height, probably could be measured in either meters or centimeters. I'm going to measure height in meters. Now notice it's just the one letter M for meters. If we have a prefix associated, it goes in front of that base unit. So as we're going, we're going to look at converting between, between these different units. We might have seen in middle school at other times the stair-step line. And we talked about the stair-step line. You might have remembered kangaroos hopping down the mountain, drinking chocolate milk. That would be one way to remember the stair-step line. We're going to go a little bit further in with it so that we can use even bigger and smaller numbers for association and see how we can actually use those. So these numbers are numerically based for the unit we're measuring, say meters, grams, liters, or seconds. Let's say we were measuring in grams. If we're at the base unit, we'd have one gram. If we move up to decagrams, we'd have 10 grams. Or hecto, 100 grams. Or kilometer, kilos, 1,000. If you had a kilogram, you'd have 1,000 grams. 
Likewise, if we were to go smaller units, if we had a decigram, that would be one-tenth of a gram. A centigram, one-hundredth. Milligram, a prefix table. This is in the bottom left of your notes for you to complete. So as you're completing this table, we have large measurements up top. Giga, you've heard of before, probably in gigabytes, would be a large amount of memory. So 10 to the ninth power would be, if we were to draw out number-wise, nine zeros behind the one. And what we'd end up with here is we'd have a billion bytes of information. Mega, capital M, is a million. Kilo is a thousand. Hecto, deca, base. Our key part here is our base unit. What are we measuring in? Base, liters, meters, grams, and seconds. And then from there, smaller units. Deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico are much smaller units of measurements. So make sure you've completed this table before you move on. Please hit pause if you need to. Note that our larger ones, capital letters, and our smaller ones, our lowercase letters, remember those are prefixes that go in front. So our stair step method. Over on the side here, I would just like you to make a little stair step line. Start out on the left and move it to the right. To reinforce that we're going from left to right, maybe even retrace it again, reinforce those stairs top left to bottom right, much like you saw on that kangaroos hopping down the mountain drinking chocolate milk idea. Now as we got our stair line reinforced, you've highlighted a few times, showing that we're moving from the top left to the bottom right. Now a couple things we want to look at here. If we are measuring in large amounts to small amounts, we're measuring large, small. If we are going to the right, going down the staircase, or going down our list, we're going to end up moving the decimal to the right. Now, if we're going from the bottom, smaller measurements to making larger, if we're moving up the staircase, we're going to move the decimal point to the left. So this is just a helpful piece of information of which way we're moving the decimal. Moving down, we're going to move it to the right. Decimal moving left if we're moving back up the chart. So if we were to look at problem one or problem A, convert the following measurements. 1,200 meters into kilometers. So 1,200 meters are our starting point, meters, and we're moving into kilometers. So we need to find meters over here. Now meters has no prefix, it's our base unit. So if we look 10 to the zero, which is actually one. But 10 to the zero, and we move to kilometers. Kilometers, moving on up. 10 to the third. Since we went up to go from meters to kilometers, we need to move up or move your decimal to the left. And we're going to move it from 10 to the 0 to 10 to the third. That's three spaces that we're going to move it. So if we're moving three spaces to the left, 1,200, there is a decimal here, even though it's not pointed or put on. 1,200, we're going to move the decimal 1, 2, three spaces to the left. We'd end up with an answer of 1.2 kilometers. Now 1.2 kilometers is still exactly the same as 1,200 meters or 1,200 meters. It's just a different way of expressing it. It's just a much more manageable number. What I would like to do is have you take a moment, pause the video, and work through these three problems. Once you've worked through these three problems, unpause the video, and then we will go through and check if you have any questions tomorrow after you've watched these three answers. So please pause now. All right, thank you for pausing. Welcome back. What we're going to look at is solving these three problems. So we're starting out 0 0.25 liters, 
and we're moving it into milliliters. So we've got to remember our beginning units and ending units and then which way we're going. So liters, just jumping back a slide, liters is our base unit. So we started in liters and then we're going to move down to milliliters. If we're moving down the stairs or down, down the stairs, we're moving that decimal to the right. So we're going to move the decimal to the right. And how many spaces we move it? Liters was 10 to the 0. And we're going to 10 to the negative 3. That's a difference of 3 places. And we're going to move those 3 places to the right. So if we were to look at where the decimal is to begin with, we move it 1 spot to the right, 2 spots, 3 spots to the right. So in the end, 25 milliliters would have been your answer. On the second problem, 4.65 times 10 to the fourth micrograms into milligrams. So we're going to start out with, just to help out, 4.65 would also be equal if we were to move the decimal one spot, two spots, three spots, four spots, would also equal that. So that might just help you out to visually look at that. We're starting out in micrograms down towards the bottom and we're moving on up to milligrams. If we're going up the staircase we're moving the decimal to the left. So we're moving from micrograms 10 to the negative sixth to 10 to the negative third. So we're moving three places and we're going to be moving three places as we said as you move up you move that decimal to the left. So if we were to take that decimal we would move it one two, three places. 46.5 micrograms or milligrams would be the same as 4.65 times 10 to the fourth micrograms. And our final problem, the large one, 5.50 times 10 to the negative tenth kilometers into nanometers. So to start out with, we need to find kilometers, 10 to the third, and way towards the bottom, nanometers times 10 to the negative ninth. We're going down the stairs. We're going to go down the stairs. We're going to move the decimal to the right. So we'll begin. We started out with 10 to the third to 10 to the negative ninth. Now, if we were to think that number line in math class, you know, you got that plus and minus at zero somewhere, I'm going from negative nine on one side to three, that's 12 spaces we're going to move. So 12 places to move. And which way are we going to move? We said we were going down the stairwell. And as we're going, if we're going down the stairs, we're going to move it to the right. So we're going to move 12 places to the right. Now, before we can do that, We've got to look at this number over here, 5.50 times 10 to the negative fifth, or 10, 10 to the negative tenth. To look at that number a little bit differently, negative 10, we're going to move that decimal 10 spaces to the left. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5, 5, we had 12 spaces to the right. So we're going to take our decimal point and we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve spaces over. In the end, we would have five hundred and fifty nanometers instead of five point five zero times ten to the negative tenth kilometers. Just a little bit more manageable numbers that we're working with here instead of with what we started with. Please bring any questions to class tomorrow. You'll be expected to begin working through these metric conversions when you get here.